right. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys had a great weekend, uh, even being stuck at home. Uh, for me, I, it was actually really nice just to have those two complete full days with my three kids. And we had some fun. We played some board games. We watched some movies together. It was good. So yeah, if you are on, let me know where you're watching from. Today we're going to talk all about how to create content for your social media pages and what sort of content you should be sharing and how to get those you know, potential customers engaged with what it is that you're sharing. So yeah, if you're on, let me know where you're watching from. I'm going to look off to you know, my left here and I can see some questions that are coming through, some comments and things like that as well. So yeah. If you're there, let me know. You can hear me nice and loud. And at, if, and at any time, if you've got any questions, please pop them into the comments. I do love hearing the comments um, and the questions and being able to answer those while we are live. But I wanted to sort of follow on with this particular topic after last Thursday's live, which was you know, all about that social media planning as to creating um, you know, a bit more of a schedule and a plan around how often you should be planning, what you should be sort of planning in, in terms of focusing on in terms of your calendar events and things like that. So I thought this was going to be a great little spin-off which could give you some ideas and inspiration as to, to what it is that we are sharing. Have we got a little bit of a problem there, Garrett? I'm seeing Garrett's face here. Sorry for the facial expressions, Kelly. <laughs> I was probably putting you off. There is, um, once again, um, issues with Facebook and the amount of people that are actually uploading content on there. So. There is a bit of a lag with the broadcast. Um, Do you know, this is something that is happening everywhere right now. With everyone that is doing lives, when you think about it, we are all being forced to stay at home and everyone who would normally be out doing their business, you know, from dance instructors to gym instructors to um, people that just want to stay engaged with their audience, they're doing it via Facebook Lives into groups and into their pages. And that's why um, it is playing up right now. There is absolutely nothing wrong with our internet here. We have 100 up, 100 down. We have cable direct into our building that we pay a lot of money for. So we can guarantee that it is definitely not us. So bear with us if there is a little bit of a lag and a, and a delay there. Yeah, it is coming through quite a bit. So the connection to... Um to Facebook for the lives today. So if you go and actually even Google it, you can find out that Facebook is having issues once again. Um, so do come back and re-watch it if it um, gets too bad in your locational area. Absolutely. Um, and we'll save it into the group. Um, yes, afterwards. because the fact that you can come back and re-watch this particular live is probably one topic that I am going to recommend that you you save. Um, you know, you can go into videos and you can actually hit save so you can come back and watch those videos. The the reason being is because I'm going to share with you some really great ideas and information right now. I've put a keynote together, so it's going to make it nice and easy for you to follow along with. But I'd love for you to, if you can, grab pen and paper and write down some of this information because right now, with us not working in our industry in terms of photographing clients, we have the perfect opportunity to start working on our marketing plan so that once this period, this time frame is over, we can hit the ground running and we can start you know, connecting with those clients because with what is happening right now in the world, I believe that there is going to be more value, more importance shared around that you know, that community, the family, um, and having this special time together, this is going to change the way we work. It's going to change the way that we connect and communicate with our clients. But in a good way, I truly believe. And there's a lot of people out there saying right now that there's potentially going to be a bit of a baby boom in nine months' time. Um, who knows? Fingers crossed there is for our, our genre, that's for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here because I'm guessing some of you are staying awake a little later in your part of the world, but we've got people from Texas, we've got people from Greece, Ohio, St. Louis. Um, hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I love this particular con content because you know, as you all aware, you see what we um, are doing every day on social media. You, they can't see my, my little spreadsheet there because I haven't um, actually pressed play yet. 
but um, yeah, we are engaging every day to try and you know connect with the people that um, follow us as much as we possibly can so that we can share as much information as we possibly can and right now it is actually getting harder and harder to engage with our audiences online and that's why we have to be consistent that's why we've got to be sharing content on a regular basis now I'm going to tell you you should be sharing on your social media pages at least once a day at least once a day. And I know sometimes it's hard to do that, but you have to schedule and prioritize, you know, the things that are going to be important to getting those clients in the door. There is no point when it comes to your marketing in terms of, you know, spending a week marketing your business really hard and then you've got clients, you've got bookings, so then you spend another week shooting those clients and all of a sudden you've spent a week shooting, you've forgotten to market your business while you're shooting and it's that follow-on effect. This is where creating a schedule, creating um, content and making it easy for, to find and access will allow you to get those posts out there every day to stay engaged with your audience. Um, you know, the, the easiest, a lot of people say, yeah, you've got to pay now to get engagement on Facebook. Well, yes, but at the same time, there are organic ways for you to get, um, you know, free Facebook information out there. For example, it's just a matter of posting content and information that you know that your fans, your followers are going to love. It's got to be of interest and it's got to be engaging. So that's why I've put this together and I'm going to go through a few ideas on what you can, can create. So I'm going to open up my little keynote here and we'll start at the beginning. Alrighty, so it might get a little boring. I'm a black and white kind of person when it comes to, to keynotes and slides, but trust me, I've got lots of graphics in here as well. So content for the socials, this is where having that schedule is going to be really important. When we talked about the social media planning last week, we had the, the yearly planner, we had the monthly planner, we had the weekly planner and the daily planner and that's how you can prioritize what it is that you are doing but also write down the different topics and things that you can share. So having a day that you might share something that is more along the, the lines of behind the scenes content and then another day you might share content that is um, you know like a pretty picture and another day you might share a blog post things like that. So I'm going to go through all the different things that you can share and then it's up to you to create that schedule as to what you're going to share on what day of the week so that it will help you become more consistent in terms of sharing, if that makes sense. Okay, so first thing, thing and these are in no particular order, um, but sharing inspirational quotes. This can be motivational, but it can also be engaging. You can find quotes that are, you know, a little funny, but you've got to find quotes that are going to be relevant to your particular audience. Now, as baby photographers, we are in the newborn posing group. So I'm gonna stick with baby photographers. Um, you wanna be working on finding quotes that are going to, you know, um, encourage and motivate new mums, you know, understand what it's like to be a new mum, what sort of struggles might they be facing, or if they're welcoming a new baby, they might have older kids and, you know, it can be a little chaotic and things like that. So you've got to kind of think, right, where is my client right now? What are they doing? Are they expecting a new baby? Is that the type of audience that you want to engage right now? Or have they had a new baby and you just want to keep, you know, your, your current clients engaged and interacting with you? So finding quotes that are going to be, you know, suitable to those type of people that can get them to connect and engage. The one thing when you are creating a quote is make sure that you always reference the author. If you find a quote you like and it's got unknown or no, no author with it, do a little bit of research, type the quote or the start of the quote into Facebook, I mean, sorry, Google, um, it will come up with the original author. You're just gonna have to do a little bit of research or put in there author unknown so that you're not claiming it as your own particular quote, just in case. Um, and then finding backgrounds as well in terms of images and graphics that can be eye-catching. So whenever I'm out and about with my phone or my camera, I'm always taking pictures of buildings, of trees, of shadows, of textures, things like that that I can use as backgrounds. But another thing is when you are doing your quotes, you know, try to be consistent with the font that you use and the style of background. If you love textures, use those. Um, 
If you have my textures, use those. But always be consistent with your brand in terms of your font and things like that as well. Because if you have a beautiful logo that you've paid money for, you'll know what the, the fonts are. Be consistent in that sense. So yeah, quotes are always going to be motivational, but like I said, they can also be funny and entertaining as well. So spend a day doing that, and then when you're sharing them, you can share them across all of your different social media platforms. Um, the next one is blog posts, and this is really important, not just for content to share, but also creating content and improving the SEO on your website and your blog. So um, making sure that you are blogging every single week is going to benefit both your website and give you something to share as well on social media. So when it comes to blogging, some of you might not know what to blog about. So if you go to the newbornposing.com website, you are going to find a blog post there and it is 22 blog topics for newborn photographers. It's going to give you um, ideas and, and of what to write about and what to share in your blog posts. That is a brilliant blog post that Michelle has put together for you and she's gonna share a link in the comments there as well so you can get access to that um, but it's also going to talk a little bit about you know um, when it comes to writing those blog point sorry blog posts is staying on brand and staying on topic and writing about things that are going to be relevant to your clients so remembering again the who what where where and why of your client of your potential client who are they how old are they where do they live what are their interests what do they do to stay sort of fit and healthy um, and then I want you also to think about, because let me just kind of sidetrack here for a moment, which I often do. Never. I apologize. But I saw a comment on another post from last week's lives and it was struggling to identify who that potential client is. Like, I don't know who they are. Like, and that's the thing. We have to understand it's not just a particular person. Yes, we do have to create an avatar for you know, our potential client as to their demographics, you know, their age and where they potentially live, what areas you service, all of those things. But you also need to be able to engage with the current clients you've got and ask them the right questions to get the information about where they might go, what they might do. But then I want you to also think about, are you offering a, you know, an entry level market option in terms of your photography services or are you sort of targeting the the middle class um, you know because we've got our cheap photographers there's a lot of people that start out and they don't know what to charge they end up sort of thinking oh well you know people won't pay that much or I'm just going to charge this much because such an else someone else does or whatever it is but then you've got your your middle class, your hard working, you know, society, and then you've got your high end, your, you know, your higher income um, potential client. So when you are targeting different businesses to network with, when you are targeting these people, where do they go and what do they do? Are they somebody who wants to stay at, you know, a five star hotel or are they happy with a three star hotel? When, when we think about where these people go and what they do, what are they spending their money on? What are their interests, their values? We really do have to do our research, but it starts with talking to our customers and asking them the right questions to get enough information to know what are some of the things, activities and interests that they have. So when it comes to finding that right, you know, area I suppose in terms of creating that avatar, as to where you are within the industry um, and what sort of level of product you are going, products and services you are going to supply. Okay, so we've got the, the blog posts. We're talking about that. Good morning, everyone. Um, and there was another one that I was going to pop in there, and it was um, Michelle's going to share it as well. But it was also about creating that content as well. Um, and there is another blog post and it's about inspirational content and it's about what to write in your blog post as well. So we'll share that link too. All right, so then um, another great thing to share is your progress. So we've all heard of that Throwback Thursday um, little sort of slogan. Um, it is fun and I do love showing my old um, <laughs> progress photos. Garrett's having a giggle. Them. I love seeing them. <laughs> but do you know what? You've got to be proud of how far you've come. At no point in time should you be comparing your work to anyone else's but yourselves. I often share my old progress photos and it's so funny because the parents of you know my older work will often comment on those photos and they'll say, I still love these photos even though you know your work has, has changed and evolved so much. 
but we are as human beings always going to evolve and it's important that you be proud of what you've created be proud of how far you've come and continually share that it's going to give you more um, more content obviously to put out there but it's also going to be very engaging because people want to see it they want to know as well like look how far you've come look at how much you've invested into to doing the craft and to getting to where you are today so i think that's always something really great to share too um, and photograph your studio, especially right now. If you have a home studio or even if you go to client homes, find a space in your home where you can create some setups. If you um, have a home studio, get in there, photograph it, share some ideas about what the space looks like. Um, have a family member photograph you to be, you know, to, to sort of add that connection. But do you know what? That there, that looks like a homeware store to me. So, you know, I'm gonna instantly connect with it, but by sharing photographs like this, what you are doing is making your client, um, you know, I suppose, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh gosh, it's gone, completely it's gone. Like they, I do they, this they on a Monday. fall in love with the, the design and the style. And well, that yeah, you get them excited, but it's also just they, they're now becoming more familiar. That's, I don't know how I forgot that word. <laughs> but you are familiarizing your customer, your potential customer with your space so that when they come there for the very first time, they've already got a clear idea of what they're walking into. When a customer first comes to our studio, if they've never seen photos of it, if, they've, if they don't know what to expect, there's going to be a little bit of excitement and there's going to be a little bit of nervousness, especially bringing a new baby into that space. So take photographs, share with them, let them connect with the environment and become familiar with it. it is going to help create that very very first impression when they walk into that space for the first time even if it's not for another couple of months start getting um, you know content like this together so that you can share it to help them become more familiar with that environment um, and it's going to make them feel more confident and safe and trust you all right so we've also got here um, how do you share your blog posts on Instagram and FB? Do you put a comment and then add the blog post link? Okay, so if I'm sh sharing a blog post on Facebook, this is the thing. Um, let's go back here to our little blog post screen. So you can see that there's a graphic there, there's a photograph. So when you are creating a blog post on your blog, always make sure that you have a graphic. So when you then go and share that photo, um, well, sorry, that, that blog post on Facebook, share the photo as well as a separate photo. So upload the photo that you've used in the blog post so it's the same, and then put the link to the blog post underneath it. Because if I'd shared just the link, obviously a graphic will come up, but it's not going to be a graphic that you might wanna promote later on. So it gives you that option of sharing just a photograph that if you upload that separately and then share the link, then what you can do is um, you know, if you want to, put $5 behind it in terms of creating an ad. So it just gives you that little bit more flexibility to share. But you can also then share that same graphic onto Instagram. Now I know Instagram isn't great at putting web links into the post and into the comments. So what I highly recommend is if you are sharing a blog post that week, change the web address in your bio, change it to that, and then just put link in bio and make them go to your bio and click on that link, but you have to remember to update that regularly. Now, don't worry if, because it's not bringing them back to you know, that original web link that you had in there, they're still going to your website. Your blog should be connected to your website. So you're still getting them onto your website. It's just that you're gonna take them directly to a blog post and then they can click on from there if they wanna have a look at more of your content, more information and so forth. I hope that answered that question. Okay. Alrighty, let's keep going. Right, so then, right now again, we're not photographing clients. So get into your studio and put some different colors and textures together and talk about how excited you are to start shooting again and getting your clients in. Now, if you had bookings, and you've had to reschedule those, this is the great way to get some of those potential clients um, and those customers that you had booked and rescheduled excited. Because, you know, even if the baby is now five weeks old or, you know, it's anywhere between eight and 10 weeks old, you can still take some beautiful photographs of that baby. 
um, there is nothing stopping you from taking awake photographs. You'll be able to get some beautiful smiles and things like that. You might not be able to do the entire newborn shoot, obviously, that you had planned, but you are still going to be able to create beautiful lasting photographs for those families. So start putting some different setups and ideas together that you're going to be able to share with your potential customers and talk about that level of excitement in terms of getting back into the studio and creating beautiful photographs. When you share your passion, when you share your value for what it is that you do and create and continually bring it back to, you know, why you do what you do, you are going to connect and you're going to engage with your customers so much more. So then when we talk about, um, you know, more behind the scenes stuff, obviously that's a sort of somewhat behind the scenes because you're putting some ideas together share behind the scenes photographs, even old ones, just bring them back to life. And if you've had previous customers or clients or if you've got an assistant that takes photos and things like that throughout a shoot, go back through those galleries, find them and start sharing them and getting people excited. Um, because when they can see you and can see how you connect, how you um, I suppose, engage or um, care for a baby, it is again going to build that trust, build that um, confidence in you, but it also lets them connect to you and visually identify you as a person. Because, you know, obviously we've met either over the internet or over the phone when we're talking to our customers, when we're booking them in, but show them some behind the scenes photographs so that they can become more visually connected to you um, as, a, as a human being. Um, and then the next one, especially during this downtime, and again, and, and after the downtime, take photographs of your own kids. Get them into your space, photograph them and create beautiful portraits. And again, what this is going to do is help you share the value of what it is that we do as photographs. Um, I mean, I haven't even edited that. I've just turned it into a black and white. That's my three kids. and. I'm actually going to be photographing them later this week here in the studio live and um, they want some, I, you know, they want some single portraits. They don't want to be photographed together. They're teenagers. That's fine. <laughs> but I'm not just photographing them for them. I'm photographing them for me. And when I share that online and again, I share that passion for what it is that we do and how valuable these portraits are for me because our kids grow so fast then again, our customers are going to really identify with that and they're going to want to engage with it as well. And you can even ask them to share in the comments photos of their own kids that they may have taken um, recently or get them booked in. If you've got some calendar events coming up and you've, you know, you've used your social media planning, if you've got a calendar event coming up and you're doing mini sessions, start taking bookings right now for those family portrait shoots by sharing these photographs. Alrightio, sharing others' content. Now this is this is a cool cool thing to do, especially on Facebook and on Instagram, because um, you know we've got a lot of Facebook pages out there that are sharing content all the time, and they have lots and lots of followers. And some pages you'll go to, and you'll see that they'll be doing you know anywhere between ten and thirty posts a day in terms of content. So they, they've got you know, a lot of people obviously sharing information on there and putting it out there. Um, but that's usually why they've got a big following because there's so much content going out there on their page. And like I said, it is getting harder and harder you know, to stand out from the crowd and, and get that engagement that we're looking for. So my advice is to find some different websites and different Facebook pages that is going to help, um, going to have some content that will allow you to share. So there's three websites there. Um, if you copy those down, you can take a photo of those and so forth. Um, might even be able to share them into the comments later on. But they are great mummy blogs. And what they have on them is lots of content for new and expecting mums and families. And so when you think about you know, what some of our, our new mums and families are going through right now, um, in terms of health, in terms of fitness, in terms of diet, there's recipes, there's struggles. They write articles about all of those things all the time and they could be really great articles that you could then share on your Facebook page um, and on your Instagram as well. So 
great great graphics that you can put um, put out there too. So. Um, linking back to other Facebook pages as well is also going to potentially help bring in a new particular audience in terms of um, demographics if, if you've got mums that follow those pages as well. So it creates that kind of flow on effect. But I highly recommend following some pages that could be of value and could be of interest for your audience and sharing content that could help them in, with whatever they might be going through. All right. Um, I know a few of you are struggling with the with the lagging here and the buffering, but I promise when we put this video back into the group, the recording of it, you will be able to watch it without any of those problems. So um, don't stress too much. Um, photograph your products. This is something that is really important as a photographer, creating printed product. Um, I am very passionate about this. If you are just selling digital files and you're putting them onto a USB, you know, you, you're not, in my opinion, really servicing your customers. Yes, it's easy to do that. We take the photo, we pop them onto a USB, we send it away, job done. We don't have to worry about ordering products, designing albums, all of those things, doing prints, worrying about the quality of that image that, and how it will print. You know, you just tend to send it off and not worry about it anymore. And it's easy. But we are headed towards a, a, you know, a printless society in the future in terms of you know, our children right now. If we're not printing photographs, eventually when they're showing photographs to their children and their grandparents, they're gonna be searching through drawers looking for a USB that they might not have a device to plug it into. So let's get those products out there and start sharing them with our customers what it is that we create and photograph them beautifully. So these are some of the products that I offer. I offer wall art, I offer beautiful albums, and I want my clients to have those as keepsakes, as memorabilia, as heirlooms. And when I photograph it to share it with my customers in terms of putting it onto the pricing and information that I send out, putting it onto my website, putting it onto my blog, putting it onto um, my Facebook page, sharing, especially if you introduce a new product, get excited about it, share it introduce it to your audience but photograph it in a way that it matches your current style and brand so I love beautiful you know organic um, materials and and colors and tones so I'm going to photograph my products the same way I photograph babies uh, and I use different tones and textures to do that so create something stunning photograph those beautiful products and share them with your audience and then <laughs> these are some old photos that I've I've done for previous clients contact previous clients right now you've got the perfect opportunity to do it if you have sold someone wall art message them get in touch with them reach out to them and ask them to send you a photograph of where that wall art hangs on their wall so that you can share that with um, your current audience on your social media pages and what that does is it reminds people of how much their kids have grown and it encourages them to want to come back and update those photos you can even very subtly say you know gosh, your kids have grown so much, um, I bet they've grown so much or whatever, you know, gosh, it'll be great to update those photos for you again one time soon when we get through this. So always thinking of ways that you can share photographs um, that you have created for previous clients as well. All right, ask questions. This is another really great thing. Ask your audience, you know, what it is that they want to see. Ask them, put different polls into your group or ask them questions about what their child, if you've got a child at whatever age it is, you know, what are you noticing right now? Um, different things like that. But think about the different ages of, of the children that you have photographed, how old they might be, what sort of, you know, uh, I suppose, for example, where I'm getting at with this is, you know, it's usually around two years between um, babies when families come back and I get a lot of returning clients so when we think about you know if you want to engage with that family that's potentially now got a two-year-old start asking questions about two-year-olds and get them to interact with you because you know then you're gonna reach out um, obviously to to them people and remind them that you are there and still offering that same service that they had two years ago um, in case they are expecting another baby especially in the next nine months. 
um, and create videos. There's so many different ways to do this. Obviously, you can pick up your phone and you can take videos. I highly recommend though, you know, using a tripod, using a camera, if you have an assistant, have them help you out. If you don't have any of those things um, and you wanna create some beautiful videos for your social media content, um, work with another photographer in your area when we get through this. Create a day where you can go and photo, do some behind the scenes videoing for them and then they can come and do some behind the scenes videoing for you so you can get that content started. But you can also create beautiful videos using um, just photographs and words. Um, in terms of a beautiful quote or things like that. And I use Animoto for that, so I can just drag and drop my images as quickly as, you know, it takes probably five to sort of 10 minutes really to create a beautiful Animoto video. You can reinvent some of your previous work, some of your older work, put some words on it, start thinking about those calendar events what's coming up, what can you start planning for right now in terms of engaging with that audience to get them excited. Um, even, you know, just thinking about everything that you did last year. Get, a, get one photo from every baby that you photographed last year and put it into a, a compilation and, um, and just play that with some beautiful music. But Animoto does also have a lot of licensed music and Facebook also has music, um, licensed music that you can use as well. But when it comes to creating different videos, um, you know, create a script, like a bit of a, a flow, if you've got someone coming in to create video content for you, write it out, what it is that you want to photograph, what it is that you want filmed, how do you want it filmed, the different sort of scenarios, put it into a bit of a working plan in terms of a script and follow it to create something beautiful. And I guarantee you, you will. But one, I'm gonna show you a video first, and that's just a studio video. So you could, you know, grab a tripod, create some beautiful, um, you know, sort of slow-mo um, pans, I suppose, of your space and get people excited that way. So it's not just a still, because video is going to help engage your audience as well um, on social media platforms. Okay, so let's start with our, our first one, the little, so the little studio one. So that's what I mean by a little pan, making them more familiar with the space. Now I know not everyone has a studio like mine, but we all have beautiful, uh, beautiful areas and you just want to introduce your the studio with people. to what sort of information that you could include in that. And like I said, it doesn't have to be video. If you're not good at taking your own videos, um, just take stills, but turn it into something that um, is better than nothing in terms of getting that space out there and being proud of it. Work on it, sit down and write out what it is that you wanna show um, and come up with some, go through your, you know, your older, older photos and, and get the best photos that are gonna match that video today to help people become more familiar with that. So we've got a comment here on the page and it's basically, you know, um, my usual issue is what to post. I'm giving you so much information here right now of what you can post. So many ideas, like I said, if, if you haven't watched from the beginning, go back when we share this video after the broadcast and watch from the beginning and sit with a notepad and pen and write a list of all the different things you could possibly share. And this is it. You have to use your imagination and be creative about what you can come up with. 
you know, we're currently not shooting our clients right now. So, you know, our creative brain has to stay stimulated. It's got to stay inspired. So this is a great way for you to start really thinking outside the square of creating content that is going to engage your customers. But I've gone through so many different ideas already um, that is gonna really help you with this. All right, so the next video that we're gonna share with you is a little birth announcement. Now this was created using, it goes, it doesn't go for very long and this is the trick with videos. You do not want your videos to be too long. People lose interest, especially, you know, now we live in this scroll society. So keep them engaged for a short period of time. Um, and you literally have that one to two seconds when that video starts of keeping them engaged. So start with something like text, start with um, a great graphic, things like that, so that it moves quickly through the video, but make them short and sweet and to the point. But this one is a birth announcement. And these are great things that you know you can offer in the future for your clients in terms of a a free way for them to promote you to share with their audience. So Garrett's going to press play on that one. So you could see something like that would make parents very excited to share. Um, and you can play around with it. Obviously that was made from Animoto and just getting the, the bits and pieces of information from your clients. You can work out how you're gonna do that and, and putting it together and sharing it. Gosh, little baby Mason, he was an absolute sweetie. Um, I've done that for quite a few of my customers and, and at the end of every session, you can take throughout your shoot, you can take a lot of close up and detail shots. And I think for a birth announcement, they're going to be the ones that you wanna share. So those close up detail shots, um, pick five of those at the same day of that shoot, uh, get those edited as quickly as you can. And honestly, the detail shots, really just converting those to a black and white, um, putting a little bit of contrast in there. And then uploading those into Animoto with a little bit of music and some information that you've got from your clients throughout the shoot and it's a gift to them. I used to do that as a gift and then they would advertise and promote me on their social media and it's absolutely incredible. I would just literally download the video file from Animoto, I would upload it onto Vimeo and send them the link from Vimeo um, but it's got my website at the end of it. And the amount of referrals I got through doing that was absolutely incredible. Uh, the next one I'm going to share with you is more of a Mother's Day. So when we talk about those calendar events, if you, even if you're not running um, a promotion or anything like that, just creating content to get mothers engaged, to thank all of the beautiful mothers for choosing you as a photographer. Find beautiful quotes. Find all the, your favorite photographs of mums in those beautiful intimate moments with their babies or during their maternity shoots to create something really beautiful. But Garrett's gonna share this one with you now. some of my favorite images there. Um, and it is, again, it's such a great way just to share, you know, more of your beautiful work with your customers. But when you add text, when you add music, um, it engages people in a way on, an, on an, a more of an emotional level um, to really connect with them. The other one that's so great is, um, I know many of you love to get creative with your photography and to sort of do different things. This is a video, this next one, that we've actually never shared. <laughs> we probably should have. I don't think this one's even got music. <laughs> no, so um, I'm, I can talk through this one, but this was a creative shoot. I love to come up with creative ways to photograph my clients or, um, you know, or just to do personal projects for myself. And 
for me, it's all about single capture. It's getting it in camera. And that's what I love the most when I am working on my creative projects because it pushes me to think a little more outside the box, I suppose, in how to get it right. So yeah, this one was a little bit of fun I wanted to share with you today. I'll keep you on screen for this okay. one. We don't have to. <laughs> but I do love watching it. I, um, you know, when I have a, a crazy idea or a concept, finding the right, the right little models, and we have Alessia's beautiful daughter here, and uh, she was very brave. We had a live owl come into the shoot, and I wanted to do a very sort of steampunk style um, set up here. So we had lots of fun this day, and and the way that the photograph turned out. Uh, was better than I could have ever imagined, but I was able to paint my own backdrop and um, and create that particular photograph to have have some fun. So yes, they can be an incentive, but if you've got kids of your own, right now is the perfect opportunity for you to come up with some creative ideas, some creative concepts, and start photographing them and get them involved in the process. Ask them, how do you want to be photographed? Let's do a photograph together and what, you know, what are some of the things right now that you, know, you love doing? What's your favorite thing? What's your favorite movie? And make them age appropriate as well so that it's a piece of art that they could potentially have hanging on their wall, which would be really cool. I do it every year for my kids. I love getting them involved in the creative process. And, and every time I walk into their bedrooms and I see the beautiful big prints that are hanging on their walls of the photos I've created, they're proud of them because they were a part of the process. They were a part of the idea. Um, you know, and, and I make it a lot of fun and it gets them involved with what I'm doing. But it also makes them very much aware of what can be achieved what you can do. So always think um, you know, slightly out of the, the box when it comes to coming up with those ideas. Alrighty, so I've showed you quite a bit in terms of what you can create. Um, the other thing that I just want to um, touch very quickly on here is, you know, when it comes to um, other different types of topics, working on um, content that is about sort of you know trending topics right now is also going to benefit your page um, the, the current algorithms in terms of Facebook and Instagram they work based on current you know trending topics so if you are going to, to share something you know obviously right now trending is is a COVID-19 so you want to sort of maybe reference you know right now during this particular time because of I'm focusing on this um, and I wanted to share this with you because I've got some downtime I'm currently working on my business and the way that I'm talking it's you have to come across as a human being You've got to be real, you've got to be genuine with whatever you get, you know, you put out there. And don't over, overthink it about what it is that you're writing. Just share your thoughts, share you. And like I said, be as genuine as you possibly can. Be real, be human. People are going to relate and connect to that so much more than, you know, just the very standard, oh, look at the beautiful baby I photographed today or last week or whatever it is. You know, come from that place of um, why you love doing what you do and share it. That's all you have to do. And most importantly, you have to be consistent. You've got to be sharing content, like I said, at least once a day on your social media platforms. Um, but the way that you do it and the way that you get organized and the way that it's going to help you get that content out there every single day is to create a media library. Um, so there is another incredible blog post on newbornposing.com and it's called Creating Social Media Content Faster and it's all about um, you know, getting organized with the content that you do create. So you might have a folder within this folder that is behind the scenes. So you can put all your behind the scenes photographs in there and then you might have another folder on there that's going to have um, you know, uh, sort of more of your office-y kind of setup and the way that you work, your editing station, just exactly like the picture that we've got here um, in the blog post. You might want to go and do a, a whole shoot based on that. You might get one of your 
kids, set it all up, put your camera on a tripod, get a family member that's in your house right now to take some new portraits of you. You want to have photographs of you in your about me section on um, as your sort of profile pictures for your business page that make it easy for people to recognize you. So get some new headshots out there as well. Um, then another thing that you might want to do in that is put a videos folder so you know where to find all of that content. But get organized, create it, read those blog posts, they're going to be really beneficial to you and start getting more and more content out there because I can tell you when people come to me and they say I'm not getting bookings or I've got crickets, I'm not getting engagement, I'm not getting interaction. Well my answer to that is what are you doing? Like what are you actually physically doing to get that engagement. You can't just not post and expect people to find you. Right now it is becoming more and more difficult to get that organic engagement. But you've got to go back to who is your customer? Who is your target market? What are they going through right now? Are they pregnant? Could they be looking for the latest in maternity underwear? I don't know, supportive um, bands, tummy bands, things like that. Um, breastfeeding pillows, information on um, I suppose unsettled babies or sleep patterns for babies, share articles on that. Share some great family recipes from different blogs. Find out what it is obviously that you know, the, I suppose the people that you're, you're trying to target and engage on your page, what is it right now that they need? Think about it, not what you need, not what your friends need, not what other photographers are doing what your potential customer needs right now in terms of either being pregnant and expecting a baby or having just had a baby. So get that content out there and be creative. You can be, but you're the only person that's responsible for putting content on that page. So you've got to start thinking about what it is that you're going to share, and how often you're going to do it and create a plan and get it done. But that is me. I've done a lot of talking. This morning, I apologize again for the feed. I can see a couple of sad faces up there. Again, guys, be patient. This video is being recorded. It is gonna be shared back in there. And right now, Facebook is experiencing more users than ever before. With all of the current businesses all over the world that have been shut down, they're still trying to find a way to engage with their clients. You don't need to do lives on your page all the time. You don't need to because otherwise you're going to be doing this and it's going to be buffering, it's going to be lagging and you're going to experience problems and frustration for your potential customers like you are receiving right now from my videos. But get this, it's content. Just get it out there, get it done. You're going to be able to come back, watch this and grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, write it down and put it somewhere where you can constantly be reminded of what it is that you've got to do. But remember, you are the only person responsible for your business. So you've got to do the work to get what you need out of it. I promise you at the end of this period, it is going to be tough right now, but you will get through it. Just create a plan and do the work each day so that you can stay focused, stay positive and come through this. All right, I am going to go. I've got some more great things that I'm going to share with you every day this week. Uh, it's going to be lots of fun. I'm going to be making some props. Like I said, I'm going to be photographing my own kids. Um, Michelle sent out an email on Friday and it had a list of what's coming this week. So if you want to stay up to date and continue to, to receive more content, more inspiration, more motivation from me, come and join me right here in the group and share it with your friends who might not be in the group because this is an amazing community and we love seeing it grow and we love seeing the support of each other. Have a great day everyone. Take care. Stay safe.